Okay, so today we're going to learn about the volume. So, for instance, think about having the area under this curve, okay, from A to B, whatever those restrictions are, and then we're going to rotate it around the x-axis. Okay, you have to visualize that this becomes a three-dimensional object, okay, where the radius... Like this is going to be the radius right here. This is the radius. The radius is different everywhere, but the radius will be defined by the height of the function, right? From here to here is whatever the height of the function is. Okay? So in this object, okay, think about a circle, pi r squared, and the volume is times by the height. So the height would be, well, whatever the interval from here to here is. Okay, so here you can see the circle. This is the radius, right? The radius is changing everywhere. The radius is going to be defined by the function, right? That's the height of the function. So that's the, the length of the radius. And the h of this object is going to be defined by those x values. Okay, so here's what we're going to do. We're going to do the volume is pi r squared h. Find the volume of revolution when y equals x squared from 1 to 5 is rotated around the x-axis. So y equals x squared from 1 to 5. Okay, that area, we're going to rotate it around the x-axis. And it's going to be the volume. Okay. <clears throat> so, we're going to set up volume. Pi r squared h. So, r squared. That's my r squared pi r squared and the h is when we apply the 1 to 5. Okay, and we're going to do this with respect to x. So you can't start yet. I would simplify this first and now you can start your antiderivative. So this is x to the fifth. I would need a 1 fifth in front. I'm going to evaluate it from 1 to 5. So 1 fifth, 5 to the fifth, minus 1 fifth, 1 to the fifth. And then I would times it by pi. So I would get 624.8 pi as my final volume. And you can just leave it in regards to pi, or I mean, you could also times it by pi. It's fine as well. Find the volume of revolution when the area bounded by x squared minus 4x is rotated around the x-axis. Okay, now here's the problem. I don't have my bounds. What are those numbers? So I want to know when this is hitting the x-axis. So I'm going to factor so it hits at 0 and at 4. So that's the parabola. That area is going to get rotated, and then we're going to be doing a three dimensional volume. Okay, the volume equals pi r squared. And then your h is going to go from 0 to 4. Okay, so let's square this. Don't forget when you square binomial, you have a whole FOIL system. So x to the 4th minus 4x cubed and another 4x cubed. Okay. 
Okay. So now anti-derive. So one fifth x to the fifth minus that'll be x to the fourth. So I need a two. This will be x to the cube. So I'll need 16 over three. I'm going to evaluate it from zero to four. So plug in a four. Minus, plug in a zero, I think zero works out to zero. Okay, so the final answer there comes out to 34 and 0.133 pi, or again, Can simplify it or leave it as a pie. Okay, find the volume of revolution when the area bounded by y equals x squared and y equals 9x is rotated around the x-axis. So the area between the line and a parabola and we're going to rotate it so you kind of have to visualize like the rotation. You're going to make a three-dimensional object. Okay, so where do they intersect each other? So where does x squared equal 9x? So at x equals 0 and x equals 9. So we have to do the volumes separately. Okay, I know that you could combine that with area, but we're going to do them separately. So from 0 to 9, the volume under the line. So that's the volume under the line, and we're going to be minusing the volume under the parabola. Okay, so this would be 81x squared and this would be x to the fourth. Okay, so I'm going to anti-derive this, so x cubed, so therefore um, 3 times 27 is 81, and we're going to evaluate that from 0 to 9, and then 1 fifth x to the fifth, we're going to evaluate that from 0 to 9. So 27, 9 cubed, minus 0. And then 1 fifth, 9 to the fifth. And then input to 0 is also 0. Okay, so this all comes out to 7, 8, 7, 3. 0.2 pi or <coughs> okay so when I said you can't do this together uh, you could do like this <coughs> together like this Okay, but you can't do it as this. You can't take this function minus this function squared, right? Because that is creating something different when you square that, right? Do you see the difference there? So like we've squared this and we've squared this. So we don't want to put them together and then square them. That's why it's just an easier idea to do them completely separate. But at this point, you are evaluating both from 0 to 9, so you could do them together there after you've done your after you've done your squaring.